A quick warning before this video starts. The audio, unfortunately, at some parts of the video really sucks. There is a very annoying clicking noise. And the moment I noticed that was when everything was recorded and I started editing. And I didn't want to reshoot the whole video, so yeah, that's just how it is. But at least I figured out what caused that. It was not a real noise, I couldn't hear anything. But it turned out that my microphone, and primarily the right channel, picked up something from this wireless hand wheel for the CNC router. I have absolutely no idea how and why this happens, but that's how it is. At least I now know what causes it and I can avoid it in the future. But now that's just how it is. In my video about this new CNC router, I showed it with this spindle that has a quick manual tool changer, where you just have to flip down this lever and then can change the tool easily. Um, don't do that. The speed control on the spindle works like just any other router with this thing here. But I also mentioned that there exists a version of the spindle where you can control the speed with the software. But I didn't have that at the time when I made the video to show that. But now I got the new one. These two spindles are basically identical with the only difference that this also has their hammer logo like the machine does. The real difference is in the back because on the new one there's now this extra plug which allows the speed control via software. It comes with another cable that of course plugs into here. And the other end fits into the back of the z-axis. The speed is controlled with a voltage between 0 and 10 volts. And the spindle then makes 4000 RPM out of 0 volts and 25000 RPM out of 10 volts. You just choose your RPM in the software or to the program. Then it gets calculated into the matching voltage. So for example 5 volts, something between 0 and 10. This then gets sent to the spindle and it rounds the voltage to the closest tenth of a volt and then puts out that RPM. To install this on the machine there's this mounting bracket with 4 screws. And together with this bracket, it gets screwed to the z-axis. Now, for example, I can turn on the spindle with the specific speed by sending a control. Or also increase the speed. Or I can also find adjust that with the override. This now, of course, was just a demonstration that it works. Usually, the spindle speeds are in the program. For example, when you use two different tools and did the tool change, the speed will adjust itself now automatically. And I'll show you that, but before that, I need to set something really important first. I need to make sure that the spindle is mounted perfectly collinear with the z-axis and is not off in this or this direction. And that is so important because, for example, when you flatten a piece with a big rotor bit like this one and it's mounted crooked, and then you do your passes, this will never result in a flat surface. And I did that to this piece here and it looks perfectly fine on a normal light, but if you look at it at low angle light, there you can now can see clearly some lines and that's exactly where the passes overlapped. And that's a sign that the spindle at the moment is not aligned perfectly. The way I'm going to adjust this now is first measuring how much it's off in this and this direction. And I'm doing that with this piece of precision ground shaft that a friend made for me. It's perfectly straight and has basically zero run out and it fits into the chuck here and when I know how much it's off I can put shim stock in between the mounting parts. I've now zeroed a dial indicator to that and will now move the spindle down and if it's perfectly aligned the dial will stay in place and if not it will move in one or the other direction. I now turn the spindle 90 degrees and repeat that and that way I can average out the spindle runout. It turned out that my spindle leans back a little bit and my measuring distance was 75 millimeters. On average I got 21 and a half one hundredths, so almost two tenths that I'm off. And the mounting piece is about half the length of my measuring length. 
So I think I'm okay if I put a tenth millimeter shim in the top here. With the shim in place, I now repeat the test and compare the result. It's still off by about 4 one hundredth of a millimeter, so I'm adding another 2 one hundredth shim and try again. And now it basically stays at zero. That is good enough. Now I set up to measure for the second direction. Here it turned out that the spindle is off in this direction by about 11 one hundredth on average. So to compensate there, I installed a 5 one hundredth shim here. That looks good. Okay, with this adjustment now done, back to the spindle speeds. I made a little test program where this flattening bit will first flatten this piece with 15,000 RPM. And in the second operation, with this bit here, this will spiral down into the material where I set 20,000 RPM and then create a little pocket with 25,000 RPM. That doesn't really make any sense, but it's just for testing. The part is finished, this here is not part of this video, it's another test so just ignore it, but I had to reshoot this scene because the audio was just too terrible. The part came out great and the spindle speeds worked perfectly. We can now also check if the flattening got better with the low angle light. And as you can see there are still some lines visible, which means it's not 100% perfect yet, but this one I pretty much can't feel, I really can't feel it. And these ones just barely, so it definitely got a lot better. But there are also some other things that could still cause that. For example, I maybe should have been tramming the spindle with the dust collection hose attached, because it is some weight that's on the z-axis, and in the range of one hundredth of a millimeter, that this has an effect. So maybe I have to do that again with the hose attached. And I guess that wraps up this very short project. Having the spindle now is great, but I can't think of anything to show more about that. It works and you will kind of see it in a future CNC projects. But what I can tell you is when you buy this machine and choose this manual tool changer spindle, it only exists in the software speed control version. And I only have this one because when I got the machine, these ones didn't exist already. So I got this one. Another thing you're maybe interested in is the wireless handwheel for the CNC router because in the video where I showed the machine I mentioned that I don't have it and can't think of getting it because it's quite expensive with 300 euros. But after that video the guys from Aiding CNC, the software that runs the machine, emailed me and said you mentioned that you don't have the handwheel in that video, we want to send you one. So they just send one over. And, and it is pretty cool. It's extremely handy for zeroing out the machine on the workpiece because I don't have to go back and forth between the computer and the machine all the time. I can stay focused on the machine and control it with this. Very handy. It also has many other nice features, but I haven't set it up fully. For example, I can't use the buttons to run, for example, my tool changing routines. So I won't show anything more of that now and rather get back into better projects.